All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, this morning I'm going to talk about sons of God. And I'm going to try to start off by giving you a, a something different to consider. All right, it's interesting to me, uh, first of all, that about 99.8%, maybe, maybe it's more than that, of uh, preachers all teach this idea that the sons of God are angels. Even in this video here, I was like, whoa, maybe somebody gets it. And then, of course, uh, I open it up, and, and it's the same thing. It, it actually uses Enoch to support the idea that sons of God are angels. Now, let me give you something different, something maybe you haven't considered before. All right, so let's go to the book of Job. All right, let's go to chapter 1. All right, in chapter 1, uh, let me read just a little bit for you. Just give you a, an idea of the setting. Okay, the setting. Where is this taking place at? Well, in verse 1 of Job chapter 1, it says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. Right? And now... That's important to understand. That's important. You can't dismiss that. All right, and he's got sons and daughters, and uh, and it was so. When the days of their feasting were gone about, and the uh, so this is without a doubt. This is taking place on the earth. Okay, I'm going to show you why that's important. Because people are actually saying this this is all taking place in heaven. Alright, that's what they say. They rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Alright, so this is them presenting offerings to God early in the morning. All right. So, this is what they did. Now in verse 6 it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Clearly, this is happening on earth. I mean, if you go... Let's start the very first verse. There was a man in the land of Uz. Alright, so there's nothing at all to indicate the idea that this is taking place in heaven. And it's very clear, I mean as clear as you could poss possibly ask anybody to describe where, if you read this and you're still confused and not sure where this is taking place, there's something wrong with your heart. The days of the now it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and, sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually continually he did this so there came a time or there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them now there, there's before I get into uh, one direction let me just point out in Matthew chapter 16 Jesus calls Peter Satan. Now, um, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. See, it, Satan is a spirit. It's not a, it's not a God. It's not a, like a, I mean, we're not Mormons for crying out loud. I can understand it. You're Mormon. You, oh, that's in heaven. And Satan's up there with his brother Jesus. 
I could see how, why you, you'd be so confused. But you're a Christian? And you're claiming that sons of God are angels? Because Satan was with um, or among them? It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me because there's only one God and it's the Lord God Almighty. It's Jesus. All right. So let's slow down a little bit. And I want you to think about this. So what's going on here? They're presenting themselves before the Lord. And right up here we see that Job did this continually. Right? They offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Uh, yeah, yeah, I gotta. It's hard for me because it's it's so obvious, and this is like kindergarten stuff. But if we go to Genesis, oh, where do we want to go for? Right, yeah, let's here. Let's do it this way. Uh, if I if I read just a little bit, just to give you a, an understanding that. This idea of presenting offerings to God goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. All right, and uh, Adam and Eve had Cain and they had Abel. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering see Cain and Abel both presented themselves offerings to the Lord and uh, again this is on earth right this is on earth so this is what we're reading here in Job it's not a new thing it's something that's been going on since the beginning. The offerings are presenting themselves, offers to God. It's not something that we well, they do it in they do it in heaven. Well, that that's not suggested implied at all anywhere in the scripture. So I, I just wonder if the people even put any thought into this. Look, I get it. It's like 99.8% of all the teachers teach this idea that this event is happening in heaven. It's astonishing to me. But why would you believe it? Because that's what they teach? Even though it's contrary to what the Bible actually says, why would you believe it? It's astonishing to me. Uh, so, let's go to, uh, I want to say, oh, uh, I don't know. I want to say Luke 4, but I think I'm way off on that. Luke 3. That was way off. Okay, Luke 3. Uh, we read that a genealogy um, goes all the way back to Adam, which was the son of God. Adam being the son of God, and Cain and Abel being the sons of Adam, therefore Cain and Abel also being the sons of God. So these men were sons of God. The word sons should be a pretty good indicator that their men you know it's a pretty strong evidence that they were men all right nevertheless the Adam being the son of God and Adam was not an angel all right so Adam being a son of God that's important you got if you're gonna be honest with yourself you have to admit Adam was a, was the son of God. All right. 
For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Right? Adam was the son of God. The sons of Adam were the sons of God. Pretty simple stuff. Now, now let's uh, consider something else here. All right, let's go to, I want to say Job 34. I'm just, there we go. I'm just guessing. Hmm. Way off. Job 38, verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now I've heard um, some of these uh, people, same sort of people. So, oh, well, this has got to be angels. It's got to be. It's just got to be. You just thought it's before the foundation of the world. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it to me, it's like people want suspend logic they suspend the actual scripture any any sort of intelligence smarts about them they put that all off to the side because they know that this destroys their false teaching their comic book doctrine all right and let me show you something here it almost, sometimes I just wonder why people don't figure this out on their own. Why do people depend on somebody else? Well, that Reverend Schmitty says, that's angels. Oh, it must be angels. They say it so well, they said it so confidently. It must be true. But have you never read the Bible yourself? I mean, it's easy to get fooled if you've never read the Bible, isn't it? But when you know what the Bible says, then surely it's not so easy to be fooled. All right, consider this. The morning stars. All right, morning stars, morning stars, morning stars. When were the stars made? Yeah, you, even asked, you even thought to even ask that question? Well, you know, well, the sons of God ain't been born yet. Blah, 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 blah. No? So, morning stars. Well, we read. Let's see. Not the first day. Not the second day. Not the third day. But the fourth day. And he made the stars also. And he made the stars also in the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So we got the fifth day here where we got a morning. And then we got a sixth day. Oops, where are we at here? Fifth day. And then on the sixth day, God created man. Male and female created he them. God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Alright, so on day six, God created man. On day four, God made the stars. Right? So... You've got two mornings. You're boxing yourself into this idea that there were two mornings, and this had to have been one of the two mornings. <laughs> uh, so which one was it? Was it day five, or was it the morning of day six? So... In order to say, well, this was the morning of day six, you have to say, 
it, it's so it's so doggone ridiculous. You have to say, well, the angels they shout up for joy, and then the and then uh, man was made, man was created after that, and then no longer did the angels shout for joy in the morning. It was just that one or two days. And what, so did, who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth if, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof and thick darkness for a swaddling band for it. I mean, all this happened before day six? Is that, is that your argument? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it, as it is turned as clay to the seal, they stand as a garment, and from the wicked their light is withhold. But this all happened before day six. Is that your argument? Huh? Gird up now thy loins like a man. Well, well that's before day six, no? No, you gotta you gotta box this in. And then shut your mind off to the rest of the scripture and everything in it. Box yourself into this idea. Well, this is just on day five and day six, the morning before they created men. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of silly, isn't it? When you consider the totality. Now... Think about this. All right. <laughs> I'm a son of God. Now are we that are born of God. Now are we the sons of God. Right? Now are we the sons of God. Now, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now we are the sons of God. Right now. We that are born of God, we are the sons of God. So, how do you explain? Well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, if you know the Bible, if you read it, you know back in the beginning that God gave man the freedom to do it on his, on his own. And they failed. And because they failed, God destroyed the world by water yet he saved eight souls right so now here you got eight people who replenish the earth and multiply and again uh, shortly after that uh, is when God confounded the language and also you know, this is when God had shortened the lifespan of man. So now we got multiple languages. We got men living shorter time periods. But what happened before the flood is happening now just at a slower rate. Okay? So now uh so so after this uh, after you know people started to multiply on the earth and um uh there was the God installed the law because you know obviously man can't do it and no matter you slow it slow it down speed it up don't matter man can't do it so God gave us a law to go by All right he told us what the law is because we couldn't figure it out on our own God gave us the law and now because of what happened with Abraham because Abraham demonstrated faith, or he showed faith, or he, in his heart he had faith. He was going to sacrifice his own son. Well, that requires a great deal of faith. And so, instead of Abraham sacrificing his son, God is going to sacrifice his son in his place. So, God does it all. So now, was the promise given to Abraham? Right? And so now the children of Abraham are the sons of God because we they are promised. 
they have the promises of God. All right, so now the children of Abraham are or represent. I, I should say I shouldn't say now, but then rep, the children of Abraham represent the children of God, the kingdom of God. All right, they are the sons of God. And before this, the Ten Commandments, before the law was given, God said to the children of Israel that you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So now the children of Israel are the holy nation of God. They are the children of God. They are the sons of God. All right. Now, um, and that still doesn't work. Okay, just uh, in case you don't know, that still didn't work. They still screwed it up seven ways to Sunday. All right, and they still couldn't do. So here comes Jesus to fulfill the work, to do all the work necessary for salvation. All right, so. Jesus comes and he tears down the wall. So now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now there's no longer one country of uh, people that are the sons of God. Right? Now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the holy nation of God. We are the children of God. We are the people of God. We are the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Alright, and this idea that sons of God are angels, and not only that, these guys, they're not even being honest. They're not even being honest about this. Angelic beings all oh, sound so sweet. That's not what they're talking about. That's not what they're talking about at all. And you see it, one deceiver after another. They're not saying sons of God are angels. No, 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 no. See... These guys are tricky. They're sneaky. They're deceivers. They're liars. And what they're really saying is that we, the sons of God, are fallen angels. It's, all you have to do is ask them. All you have to do is ask them, and they'll tell you. But are you a fallen angel? Are you a son of God? And that's what they're saying. They're saying, well, Genesis 6, fallen angels. They're not saying that these are sons. These They are not saying that these are angels. No, 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 no. They're saying that these are fallen angels. Beloved, now are we fallen angels. See, these guys are making a mockery out of the Word of God. They're making a mockery out of the sons of God. They're making a mockery, and they're scoffing me and you that are born of God. You know, it's interesting because that's exactly what the Bible says would happen. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. So I think it, deep down in their soul they're laughing and giggling because they say they proclaim in front of God and everybody that those of us that are the sons of God were fallen angels and they snicker deep inside their soul. It's funny to them. To them, it's funny. Now, Isaiah 5. 
verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. These people are saying that the sons of God are fallen angels. Right? That the sons of God, the sons of God are fallen angels. That's what they say. Think about that. And why would they even say that? Why would they even why would they even go there's nothing here in Genesis uh, Genesis 6. There's nothing in Job 1, 2, 38, whatever. Nothing here in the first John chapter 3. Nothing there. Nothing anywhere that suggests this idea or supports this idea that angels are sons of God. Nothing at all. Not, e not one single verse even implies it. In fact, there is a verse that says that says, let me find it, it says specifically, precisely, exactly, for unto which of the angels said he at any time? This is a question being asked. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten me, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Which of the angels? Can you answer that question? I already know the answer. None. And he shall be unto me a son. None. None. And he shall be unto me a son. None. There's not one single angel that is called the Son of God. Not one. We that are born of God, we are the sons of God. Adam was the son of God. In Luke chapter 3, Adam was the son of God. Adam's sons were the sons of God. All right. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. It's not complicated. It's pretty simple and easy to understand. Nothing at all in the, in the scripture and nowhere in the Bible does it support this idea. The angels are sons of God. So why would you believe it? Well, that's what... Boom, 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 every day. Boom, 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 all these parrots. You got one parrot after another. Parrot, 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 echo. Angels are sons of God. Mark. Right? I mean, just one parrot after another. And they don't know. Hell, if they knew, they they would make uh, some sort of a uh, legitimate case. They can't, because there's nothing at all anywhere. Nothing. To support this idea that angels are sons of God. And again, one more time. It it makes it crystal clear right here in Hebrews chapter 1 that no angel is ever referred to as a son. So why? So why? Why would you believe it? Why is it so important to you to believe that? What's the problem here? Why is, why is this a problem for all these people? And isn't that interesting? Have you ever thought about that? Why is this a problem? Why is it so important for them to teach this idea? Well, I'm telling you, they do it for one reason. They don't care about the truth. They just want to mock the Word of God. They want to scoff the Word of God. They want to make you look stupid. That's why they teach it. I don't know why anybody would go along with it unless they were one of them. Why? Why is it so important to you to teach this idea that angels are sons of God? You're not a son of God? I'm a son of God. And believe me, I'm no angel. <laughs>